write down all my fears, my judgments, my mm. self-limiting beliefs, the things that scare me, the things that are not serving me. You write that down on a piece of paper because congratulations, you just identified the things that are stopping you from becoming the best version of yourself. Mm. Number two, next what I want you to do is to forgive yourself for judging yourself. Mm. So, so often we feel- Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential, and together we can change the world. If this is your first time joining us, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell and hit that like button. This will be greatly appreciated in helping getting out this content to great leaders and great individuals like yourself. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Rob Cressy. Rob is an entrepreneur, a prolific creator, and self-mastery coach. Rob has such amazing energy and has a lot of content to bring to this podcast on today. He's coming with tools and tips on how to shift your mindset and have a positive attitude, even in adversity and overcoming obstacles. Spinning the worlds of personal development, marketing, and branding building. His unique approach to creating change the way you think, take action and interact with the world. Please help me welcome Rob with Foundational Mindset. This is Cedric Francis and you are listening to Lead to Greatness. How's it going? I am doing absolutely fantastic. How are you doing today? I am doing amazing and definitely excited to have you on the Lead to Greatness podcast. What I want you to do, just go ahead and introduce yourself to the Lead to Greatness community. Let us know a little bit about you. Uh, My name is Rob Cressy. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a creator. I'm a coach. I'm a husband. I'm a dad. Raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lived in Chicago for 12 years, which was one of my dreams. Recently moved to Sarasota, Florida back in September because my wife gave birth to our first child and we wanted to be closer to family. And for me and my business, uh, I'm a personal growth coach. I help people become a better version of themselves by creating the habits, routines, the mindsets and ways of being to help them continue to win. Yes. And you're like, how in the world do you get to that point where you do it? <laughs> and it's going to be so relevant to your audience because when I started my entrepreneurial journey and I was at zero, just like everybody else who started, mm. I sat there and I was like, all right, I'm going to audit the success habits of the most successful people in the world, the people I aspire to be like and do things like. Mm. And in the process of doing that, I adopted a growth mindset. So when you're at zero, I'm like, all right, I can wake up whenever I want. I can go to bed whenever I want. I can work out if I want. I can eat whatever I want. I can do whatever I want for work. I can literally do everything. And upon that realization, it went from like, oh my God, look how much there is to, oh my God, look how much there is that I get to do. And with that is the second gift that I received that I would love to give everybody else and that is self-awareness. Mm. So at the very beginning, I became self-aware and adopted a growth mindset. Mm. Rinse and repeat that for over 12 years. And all of a sudden, I evolved into a personal growth coach because I invested in my per- personal growth and development. Yeah. Because once again, when I'm sitting there at zero, I'm like, all right, I'm looking at entrepreneurship, roller coaster, Mm -hmm. failure rate is ridiculous. Some number, I don't even know what it is. So I'm like, all right, what can no one take from me? If I bring in $0 of revenue today, tomorrow, next month, the next three months, what can no one take from me? Mm -hmm. Two things, my mindset and what I learn. Let's go, baby. I'm all in. Yes, yes, yes. And, and you know what? And this is so great, Rob, because this is so important. A lot of times we're trying to start with business, but without starting with ourselves. And I love the way you said that with the mindset. And so my question is, at what point did you realize that, okay, my mindset, if I don't get my head together, if I don't get what's going on in my mind together, it's going to affect everything. Well, at what point you decided I need to get out of my way? Immediately, mm. because... I am not the person that I was when I started this. So background was in digital advertising sales. Mm. My dream leaving college, boom, 
I have a marketing degree. I'm going to work for an ad agency. I'm going to be creative. I'm going to come up with ideas. And what ended up happening, I was unemployed for a year and a half, dead broke, living off my credit card, finally got my first job mm. at a fifth third bank call center, slinging home equity loans in a cube farm, making $10 an hour. Oh, this was the exact opposite of everything I went to college for and everything that I dreamed of. Mm. And that was my entry into inside sales. I then moved from job to job, paid a little bit more, a little bit closer to commute. And eventually I landed in online advertising sales. Mm -hmm. I legitimately showed up one day for work in this new job. I didn't know what I was doing because I was just happy to be making more money. I was in digital <laughs> advertising. Right. Well, as good fortune would happen, I was in that industry for six years and I got really good at it and it paid very well. But a seminal moment happened in my life. You can get paid a crap ton of money to do something and to be very good at it and not love doing it. Mm. So for me, I was the work hard, play hard ad sales bro, mm. where I live to party with my friends on the weekends. I'm living in Chicago, having the time of my life. Right. But here's the thing. I had no personal development. I had no coaches, no mentors. I had no, I was reading no books. So mm. I was all about myself, mm. but more in the lifestyle of the things that money can create for you. Right. But when I left to go all in in my dreams and, and I said to myself, I would regret it for the rest of my life if I didn't give it a shot at making my dreams happen. Mm. And my dreams at that time were to get paid to talk about sports for a living and be creative. I wanted to be a full-time creator and entrepreneur. And I looked at the landscape that was out there and I said to myself, I am as good or better than everything that I see out there. Mm. And because of that, to me, the bigger risk was not taking the risk. Mm. Because I wasn't willing to live the rest of my life with the regret of, listen, dude, you see what's out there. And I'm like, I'm as good or better than all that stuff. Um. So I'm all in, but now I go back to zero again. So that's when I realized what got me here wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to go. Yes, yes. That is amazing. Let's let's talk about your life as an entrepreneur, prolific creator, and a self-mastery coach. What inspired you to begin that journey and why? So on the creating side, there's one thing that someone said to me, and I wish I could tell you who it was because I don't remember. And it's probably the most <laughs> impactful quote that has ever been said to me in my life. But he said, and this is early on in my entrepreneurial journey, he goes, Rob, if you ever hope to get paid to do what you love, you better be doing it already. Mm. And I was like, all right, I want to get paid to talk about sports for a living. How do you do that? Well, one, I should teach myself podcasting. And this is like eight years ago, 10 years ago. This is right. pre-podcasting being cool. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I should have a podcast. So I'm talking about it. And if I'm doing a podcast, I should probably teach myself how to be a host and if I'm doing audio, I might as well learn on camera because that's the next thing. Yeah. And because I'm at zero dollars and I have no money, I should probably teach myself audio and video editing. Mm -hmm. And if I've got a podcast and I'm building a brand, I should probably teach myself social media marketing. Yeah. And if I'm doing that, I might as well learn community building. And if mm -hmm. I'm building a community, I might as well create apparel. And if mm -hmm. I'm creating apparel in a community, I might as well learn how to throw events. So literally, Everything that I've done and learned is because I've seen my dreams on the other side of learning it. Yeah. So sure, there is getting paid to talk about sports for a living, but then comes the growth mindset of all of this. So now I'm reading books on anything from creativity to using GoPros to leadership and marketing to profit first and running how to business financially and all of these various things to Grant Cardone and sales oh, goodness. to where I'm just like, <laughs> Boom, what can I learn? What can I learn? And I like, I turn into Neo in the Matrix, who's like, whoa, I can learn Kung Fu now. And, <laughs> and that's how I became. So for me, that's oh, where the creator side of things happened. And on the coaching side, I've been about this life for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. And I actually got hired a few years ago as a high performance coach for an ad agency in New York to make their sales team better at business by being better at life. Mm. I had no web page, no landing page, no offer because at that time, my entire business is sports, but the CEO at that time had a relationship with me and saw how I lived my life. Mm. 
wow. uh, a natural part of my content creation, even when I was a sports creator full time, was entrepreneur mindset because I was part of the startup community. Yeah. Because I was like one of us. Boom, I'm in this. We're on that hustle and grind and we're doing everything that we can. So I would share my mindset along alongside this. And he's like, Rob, will you make my sales team better at life? And I was boom, let's do this. Mm. I created a 22 week program that became the first time another leader hired me a second time, same type thing. He had a sale, he had a team of three. I went ahead and transformed that. And mm. guess what happened? I transformed all these people's lives mm. because the way that I lived my life, the way that I saw things, the way that I created myself yeah. for showing up as the best version of myself every single day, huh? That's not taught in college. That's not taught in a textbook. And that's also not taught at companies that we go to work for. Right. Because I've worked for a lot of those things. No one at any point's like, hey, Rob, I'm going to make you better at your job by teaching you how to create a morning routine. But guess what? These are the things that actually we both know are the separators for being a successful entrepreneur and more importantly, living a holistic life that you love. Mm, that is a load of knowledge. Oh, man, you, you really just took us through a whole process of business and different aspects of business when you talked about all the things. And what I love about what you said is how relentless you were through the process. You didn't allow what you didn't know to be your final destination and your final uh, thought process, but you learned it. You went all in. You went all in. I want you to talk to that individual that may feel like, I know this part, but I don't know this. And they're allowing this to hinder them from making that next move. What would you tell that individual? Well, one, you're not supposed to know all of this stuff. So be okay with that. So can you create peace with yourself? So I'm talking to me from 12 years ago and I'm gonna say, you know what? I want you to be at peace with not knowing because here's the thing that I had to tell myself. This is what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. When I left the job security in the good money, my mom like, for probably three or four or five years after would still be like, you know how moms can be like, yeah. Robbie, you're making so much good money. Why don't you just go back to that? And I was like, <laughs> mom, you can just stop asking that All it's right. gone. It's dead. I burned the boats. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, there was no looking back, but a mom, of course, being a mom wants safety for her baby. Absolutely. But for this, so you're like, all right, I don't expect you to know everything, but I do expect you to learn everything mm. and you can learn things and then you can build teams around you. You can delegate, but Rob, I'm just a one man show. Yeah. I was like that for probably a decade. I get it because I know what it's like to work at a fifth third bank call center, making $10 an hour mm. se selling home equity loans in a cube farm. Mm. I was Peter from office space. So therefore I am going to do everything in my life to not live that life again. I know what it's like to be broke, living off your credit card, making no money. It's terrible. Yeah. It's yeah. horrible. I know what it's like to make good money and then go back to $0 overnight. And now you're no longer that you have no safety net and it can be scary as crap for yeah. years at a time, not a day, not a month, years. Mm. So be someone who's like, am I willing to be, all in for a minimum of a decade to two decades to three decades to four decades, mm -hmm. because this is a lifestyle and a way of being, this is not like a, I think I want to be an entrepreneur. Like I think I want to work at the aquarium when you're younger, uh, 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 <laughs> not like this. So yes. a lot of, a lot of people struggle with the, but Rob and Cedric, I don't know what I'm passionate about or what that thing is for me, as I said, that was a that was a zero. I'm all in. If you can yeah. do whatever you want in your life, what would you want to do? That's what I chose. So answer that question for yourself. If you could do whatever you want in your life, what would it be? I want to sit on the beach in Bali. Cool. Go ahead and be a travel blogger. Mm. Like, what? All, everything is possible. I have friends who do this. I actually have two friends right now in Bali separately. That one works for LinkedIn out of Singapore. Another girl is a traveling nomad. So. This becomes your eyes open to the possibilities. Yeah. So yeah. don't concern yourself with how, instead fall in love with your vision. Yes, 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 yes. Another knowledge bump. And Rob, what I love about this, one of my personal experiences is 
I remember starting, you know, just starting, just doing what you love to do, asking that question, but then doing it. And while doing it, I realized in the process of doing it that I discovered more. It was, it was foggy. I didn't quite understand it. I, I was just kind of going off where I, I feel this. I feel this what I should be doing. And I start doing it. And then once I started moving in it and getting closer, things start opening up and I, I begin to see things clearly. So what, what's your experience with that? I love what you just said because there's so much that we can unpack there. Mm -hmm. So for me, once again, I'm going to go back to zero. Everybody's at zero. I'm no different. Yeah. So I asked myself one question. So I didn't know everything. I knew virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, what is going to help me accomplish my goals faster? Positivity or negativity? Mm -hmm. Ah, Positivity, of course, yes. negativity is going to take you further away from where you want to go and mm. slow you down. Yeah. Therefore, negativity has no place in my life. In positivity versus negativity became a binary equation. Negativity, zero. Positivity, one. I have never watched the news in my entire life because that is not helping me achieve my dreams. Yeah. It is taking me further away from it. And we live in a world right now, at no point in the history of the world has there been more things thrown at our attention to distract us, to give us fear, judgment, and self-limiting beliefs. No. And welcome to entrepreneurship because no one's going to hold your hand and say, don't do this. Mm -hmm. So here's a massive tip. Audit your inputs. You mm. have to be so vigilant about what comes in your eyes, in your ears, that mm. you are... You have blinders on to what it is that you want to create. Yeah. So when everybody else is tripping about the news or what's going on with politics, I'm sitting here and reading books that blow my mind. Mm. Like when I first heard of Grant Cardone, I read all, I binge read his books. And this became a new term for me. Mm. When you discover someone and you're like, oh my God, can you guys believe what are in these books? Robin Sharma was another one for me. When I heard about Robin Sharma's books and I'm like, these are yeah. incredible. Yeah. And then Ryan Holiday's books, the best book I ever read, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Why? As an entrepreneur, you know what we need to specialize in? Adversity. Mm. How do you see the lens of overcoming obstacles? Because by design, we show up and there's obstacles all over the place. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there's a landmine. So therefore, it may be wise to say, hmm, how am I going to get over, under, through, or around these obstacles and see the obstacle as the way? The challenge that is in front of me is actually where the growth path is. Mm, another knowledge bomb. Wow. Load of knowledge bombs you're dropping, Rob. Listen, I, I want to stay right here because... We're, we're talking about obstacles, uh, adversity, you know, just different things that happen in our life. I want to kind of go shift to some, some practical things. What are some practical things? Because adversity is a must. Storms will come. You know, and these things are going to happen, whether you're ready for it or not, it's going to happen. What are some practical things that we can begin to put into place to maneuver better through these obstacles. I'll keep this so simple. Mm. The very first thing I have done every single day for the last 12 years is say one sentence. Today is going to be a great day. <laughs> the second that I wake up, the second I wake up, I don't jump, I don't look at my phone. I don't check email. I don't check Slack. I don't turn on the news. I don't turn on Sports Center. I say to myself, today is going to be a great day. And then I zombie walk my way to brush my teeth. And you know what I do? And here's the next thing. I've turned to brushing my teeth into a trigger for gratitude. Because sometimes in life, you just need one thing to remind you of something else. So I'm like, all right, what are the things that we do all the time? Well, I brush my teeth twice a day. Would you like to have a little bit more gratitude in your life? I certainly would. Where are we going to find time to do that? How about while well, I'm sitting here brushing my teeth? So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for the podcast I'm doing with Cedric. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to live my dreams. Mm -hmm. Boom. Put my toothbrush done. So in the first minute and 30 seconds, I've said today is going to be a great day. And then number two, I've said three things that I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. So after that, I then go and make a cup of coffee and this is the game changer of all game changers. 
I promise you, if you do this single habit, it'll change your life forever. So Cedric, back to the beginning, I'm sitting there and I audit the success habits of the most successful people. And I heard the same thing over and over and over again. Absolutely. The average CEO reads 60 books a year. And I heard it like 50 times. (laughs) And I'm like, crap, I'm reading zero. (laughs) Think I want to get on this. So I, one of the terms that I've evolved into loving is success leaves breadcrumbs. So you hear it once you're like, whatever, two, three, four, five, six, boom, Robin Cedric's podcast. Hey, if I'm not reading all these people that I aspire to do things like they all read. All right. It's on me now if I don't do this. So I'm like, all right, if something is important enough, you will always find time to make it happen. Right? <laughs> cool. So when is there always time to make something happen? Always first thing in the morning. So for the last decade, after I said today's going to be a great day, after I brushed my teeth and said three things that I'm thankful for, I have read a book for 30 minutes every single day, weekends Mm. included, because it guarantees by design that I make today better than yesterday. Because Mm. if you learn something today, Mm. you do that first thing in the morning, reading a book for 30 minutes, Mm. you've guaranteed you're better than you were yesterday. Boom. Now I'm like those CEOs who are reading 60 books a year. And you're like, well, I don't have time to read 60 books a year. Mm. Yeah, you do. Do it first thing in the morning. I set a timer on my phone or my watch, 30 minutes, boom. I schedule this like it's a meeting. But Rob, I'm not a morning person. Yeah, me either. So you're like, how do you even start a reading routine at whatever time you wake up? Well, one, if you need to wake up earlier, shave off three minutes or four minutes at a time, do that for a week, then keep doing that. It's a lot easier than trying to chop off two hours. Mm. So then I want you to choose a book you enjoy reading not Harry Potter or something that's personal growth and development or entrepreneurship, something that's going to get your mind working for me. That was rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki and the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Those are the first books that I ever read. Didn't know crap about reading, but then all of a sudden when you're reading, you're like, man, they mentioned another book in here. Huh? Is that a breadcrumb? Let me check out what that book is. Oh, wow. That book's really good too. Then you listen to a podcast and you're like, Whoa, Robin Cedric mentioned this guy's book, The Obstacles the Way. wonder if I should check that out. Right. Whoa, that book is really good. Who's this author? And the next thing you know, you become a sponge for learning. And congratulations, you just created a growth mindset. Knowledge. Mm, uh, Bump, you're dropping knowledge after knowledge after knowledge after knowledge on the Lead to Greatness community on today. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm learning. I'm taking notes. And everything you're saying, I'm like, I I know it works. I know it works. Listen, Lead to Greatness, it works. I have this question. How can you control self-talk and the stories we tell ourselves? Cedric, I love life because if I could show you the notes that I am writing during this, the exact words that I wrote down, control the story you tell yourself. Yes. Literally (laughs) the most important thing you will ever hear. Or as Tim Grover says in the book, Relentless, everything's labeled number one because everything's the most important. Mm. Once again, this is the most important. Yes. And for me, my entire coaching business and personal growth and development is built around this concept Mm. of controlling the story you tell yourself Yes. because the story that you tell yourself will then manifest itself in the actions you create in the world and the actions you create in the world will create your outcomes. So once again, if you have bad in bad comes out. Mm. So if good comes in, good comes out. And remember, by design, entrepreneurship is looking more like a roller coaster than it is a linear path. So we know by design, <laughs> there are going to be challenges ahead. Yes, yes. All right. We know there's going to be challenges ahead. So like Eminem in 8 Mile. So for all of you who have seen that movie and B-Rabbit's at the very end, and he knows all the things that Papa Doc is going to say to him. Yeah. So what does he do? Boom. He spits those bad boys out right away to where Papa Doc has nothing else that he can say. Yeah. Huh? Do you think it would be possible for us to do the exact same thing that B-Rabbit did? So you sit there wow. and you say, all right, 
write down all my fears, my judgments, my mm. self-limiting beliefs, the things that scare me, the things that are not serving me. You write that down on a piece of paper because congratulations, you just identified the things that are stopping you from becoming the best version of yourself. Mm. I'm literally giving you my coaching lesson that I tell my clients. Number two, next what I want you to do is to forgive yourself for judging yourself. Mm. So, so often we feel I am not enough. I'm not doing enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough clients. I don't know. We live in lack so much, but really that's just a story that we're telling ourselves. So can you forgive yourself for judging yourself and see your innocence in this? Because you wouldn't wake up in the morning and be like, you know what, Cedric, you're not enough today. You're just, you're a failure. No, we would never do that. There is something else going on in our wiring that's causing us to think that. Yeah. So can we be self-aware enough to say, you know what? Step one, I recognize this thing is happening. I wrote it down. Mm. I am not enough. Mm. Step two, I forgive myself for judging myself that I am not enough. Mm. And here's the important part. Because step number three, I am infinite love. Mm. This means I love myself unconditionally. Yes. I love my clients. Yeah. I radiate love. Boom. That is there because I'm not coming from lack. So every single day. So now is the important part. So we've identified this. We've seen the judgment. We've forgiven ourselves for the judgment. We've created the powerful declaration that creates who we are. Now let's use the power of consistency. And for those of you who are taking notes right now and looking for more book recommendations, The Power of Consistency by Weldon Long, mm. one of the most recommended books in my life. And what in the world is the power of consistency? It is your ability to do the same thing over and over and over again. Crazy. We're mm. going to stack positive habits, routines, and mindsets mm. that create us into the best version of ourselves. Yes. So person A is sitting over here and their self-talk, which we know happens, goes, I'm a failure and I don't have enough. Us over here says, you know what? I am infinite love. And I think about hugging my son or hugging my wife or that time that I had a really good meeting with a mentor of mine. He's like, man, you have such good energy. And you're like, boom, I am love. Because we're not man manufacturing something that doesn't exist. What we want to do is unearth the truth. Mm. So you go through here and you're like, all right, what's the truth about me? What are all the powerful versions of me? So boom, I am a revenue generating juggernaut. I'm a force of attraction. I am that I bring magic to life. I am forgiving. You think we would want a little bit of forgiveness in us every single day? I certainly would. I am that I care the most. So now you design the best version of yourself for the emotions that you feel and the way that you think. Congratulations. You're now building the story that you're going to tell yourself and speak out loud every single day and feel into and create that emotion. Mm. Go ahead and tell me you won't be the best person in the world after you do that. Another knowledge bomb. Wow, Rob, this is amazing. I'm telling you, I know there are some note taking. And if you're driving, please don't drive and take notes at the same time. <laughs> please pull over, be safe, because Robert is really helping us on today. This is amazing. I want to do a little bit more practical on today, man, because you, you're really, you're really dropping some knowledge on us today. So I have to ask you this. What are some tips, tools, advice that you can share with the Lead to Greatness community? Well, there is a mantra that I live by. Live by design, not by default. Mm. The majority of the world lives by default. Mm. They show up, they go to work, they go back home, they watch Netflix, they rinse and repeat it five days a week, live for the weekend. And guess what? I was that person for the large majority of my life. Mm. So I'm preaching from my own experience. Yeah. So everything you hear now is because I used to be one person, but then I chose to live a life by design. And what is a life by design? It is your best life. It is the one where it's like, hey, Robin Cedric, you can do anything that you want. You can be anything you want. You can live your best life. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So boom, you start designing this stuff. So let's get super, super practical here. Number one, write everything down. 
This is the game changer of all game changers. I have written down every conversation, every coaching call for 12 straight years. My Evernote library has more knowledge in it than universities. So much so that I built a university for my coaching clients. That's essentially everything we're talking about on this podcast and more. Why? Because if I learn something once, like riding a bike, you don't pop wheelies on day one. I want the ability to go back and have a digital library of every time I wrote the word morning routine or peace or gratitude. Boom. What do you think you can do with that stuff? Mm. You think you can inspire some people, inspire yourself. So write things down, yeah. live by design, not by default. Um, some other things that I think would be helpful to people. Oh, don't sleep on this creating an evening routine. Mm. We're going to talk a lot about morning routines, the way that you start your day. But how about this? Start tomorrow's success today. What in the world does that look like, Robin Cedric? Well, it's actually quite simple. We know our energy is going to be lower. There's more things that are going to distract us. So therefore, how about we just give ourselves five minutes at the end of the day? What are we going to do? Well, you pick up that toothbrush, three things. Boom. I'm super grateful for Cedric's Fire podcast. I'm super grateful for that awesome sushi roll I had. And I'm super grateful for the NBA playoffs. Boom. <laughs> so you go ahead and do that. Oh, man. One of the things that I want you to do is visualize. Visualization is your opportunity to live in your dreams. So the more clear oh, you can make your vision, the more often your mind has been there. So what I want you to do is to dream as big as you conceivably can think and then go ahead and read Grant Cardone's book, 10X Rule. And then you're going to 10X that vision. It's gonna be so big that it scares you. I want you to shatter that belief ceiling you have. Dream, I want you to get specific. If you mm. want a red Lamborghini with black stitching on the leather mm. and anything else that's inside of that, I want you to close your eyes and feel it and visualize it. Mm. And then what I want you to also do is I want you to create a folder on your phone and you're gonna call it vision board. So I want you to go and save some pictures of what your dreams are, the things that you want, the house on the beach, the yacht, the courtside seats at something, the place you're going to buy for your business or you're gonna create your studio. And I want you to live in that vision every single day because when you do right before bed, guess what your mind's gonna do when you're sleeping? Boom, you're gonna be thinking about this day after day after day. You're just living in those dreams. Once again, do not be concerned with the how. Just put the vision out there. And another thing that I do, I write down my wins from the day. Crazy. In a world of entrepreneurship where there's holes and challenges and you even have bad days, there's got to be something good that happened today. Yeah. You at the end of your day as part of your evening routine, you write down three wins or mm. one win or five wins, whatever mm. it is. Mm. You sit there and you look, boom, mm. this is something that good. Mm. Anchors in gratitude, boom, gratitude again, boom, anchors in vision. Yeah. And then lastly, plan the next day. Just write down what you're going to do tomorrow. Mm. Because a lot of people just sort of wing it. And as entrepreneurs, by design, a lot of us aren't structured. I wasn't, mm. but I learned structure. Yeah. So if you can write out what you're doing tomorrow today, guess what? Tomorrow's going to be a success. Yes. So now we stack our morning routine with our mindsets and the stories that we tell ourselves. Boom. We crush it during the day. We do everything that we can. We do what we love. Evening gets here. Man, what an incredible day. All right, give me some five minutes. Living in gratitude. Write down my wins. Visualize. Brush my teeth. Boom. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave with this. I believe in you. So if you're here watching this or listening to this and you're uncertain on your journey or you want to do this and there's just not support around you, Know that I've been there. I lived it for the last 12 years. Mm. And the most important thing is your belief in yourself wow. because you're not going to be someone who quits and becomes a statistic. Uh-uh. You are about this best year ever life. Yeah. I believe in you. Remember that. Yes, yes, yes. Knowledge bomb. Wow, Rob, Rob, man, this is amazing. Rob, you didn't drop so much knowledge on us. If someone wanted to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? So I've got two things. Based on this conversation for someone who's like, 
I'm about this life. I mm. want more of this. Mm. I've got a program that people can live in. Go to robcressy.com backslash I am great. Mm. And it's called Design Your Best Self. And it's an eight-week personal growth program that is a roadmap to freedom, happiness, and a life you love. So what I did is I reverse engineered everything that we just talked about here so that you can layer on what you want to create for your vision within this framework so that you can show up as the best version of yourself every single day. You don't have to show up like Rob. You don't have to show up like Cedric. This is your vision. This yeah. is your life. I'm just going to help guide you. So robcressy.com backslash I am great. Or I've got a podcast called Best Year Ever. You can listen to it everywhere. Crazy concept. How do you create your best year ever? Create your best month ever, week ever, day ever, hour ever, moment ever. Because yes. best year ever is a mindset, a lifestyle, and a way of being. Wow. Wow. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding so much incredible, amazing value to us all. Thank you for having me, Cedric. I loved doing this. It was just so much fun. And don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And if this podcast was helpful to you, leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace. We out. <laughs>